The world is an ever-changing place. The news is filled with stories of disaster and other worries that can make you feel anxious and out of sorts. How can you possibly plan for your future or ensure your children's well-being if you have no way of knowing what's going to happen next? Who exactly can you count on to help you in these uncertain times? And whom can you trust? If you're spending your days worrying and your nights in fitful sleep, it's time for you to learn how to feel good about your life and that which is yet to come. Instead of living in fear, it's time to learn how to live in faith from that place of certainty that all is well and will continue to be so. Welcome, everyone. It's Marsha Martin, the Heart Healer, here with you on Angel Heart Radio. And if you're ready to push worry aside and begin living your life in a state of love and joy, then please stay with me because when we come back, we're going to discover just how to overcome fear of the unknown. Angel Heart Radio programs should not be used to replace your legal or medical advice, nor your own sound judgment. In truth, nothing can dim your magnificence. You are a divine spark, a universal light. You are here on purpose. You are part of a divine plan. And it's our joy to support you. We're here to celebrate you. Welcome to Angel Heart Radio. Powered by love. Angel Heart Radio is brought to you by angellight777.com. Put the power of the spiritual realm to work in your life with Marsha Martin on Angel Heart Radio starts now. I am so glad that you are all with me today and I am excited to answer your calls and questions and the angels are here ready to speak with each and every one of you. But they are asking me first to set some parameters for everyone so that we make sure we all understand that given the current events and all of the ongoing possibilities of what might go wrong, It may appear to be normal to be afraid. So I completely get that it's normal to be afraid. However, this is what they need you to understand. It is normal, but not healthy. It is normal, but not divinely inspired. And it's normal, but out of alignment. So let's look at what those three things mean. And then we'll go right to our first caller. So. It's normal, but not healthy. Why is it not healthy to be in a state of worry and anxiety about what might come? Because of the incredible stress that you are putting on your body. It means that you are basically writing yourself a ticket for more accidents, more opportunity for illness, and it's probably going to look to you like your worst fears are coming true. But truly, because you're going to be receiving the be more accident prone and have more illnesses. But truly, all that's happening is that your thoughts are forming into your physical reality. So we want to make sure that we are really spot on about understanding how much power we have over our lives. Now, it's also not divinely inspired. God will tell you over and over and over again through every scripture and every channeled message that you'll ever receive that you are safe and loved, that you cannot be forgotten, and that you are always within their loving embrace. However, you can shut God out with worry. You have free will, and you manifest with your thoughts. So you can make it impossible for God to be able to reach you. And that last thing that they want to make sure that you understand 
is that you are out of divine alignment when you are in a state of worry and anxiety. So when we're walking or partnering with the divine, we make ourselves available for that divine support. And then you automatically are there there for synchronistic events. You get clear guidance. You feel supported. You feel loved. And gosh, from that place of loving support, life just becomes so much easier. But when we step out from underneath God's umbrella, it means that you're choosing to do everything on your own. And you begin living that catch-as-catch-can life. You may or may not be available for guidance. And you start getting led by the ego. And the ego is not interested in your highest good. The ego is interested in power and uh, its own agenda, which generally resorts or ends up keeping you weak or subjugated in some way. So just from that place of anxiety and worry, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. We are going to open the phone lines now and begin taking callers, and there are quite a few people. So please understand that we're only going to spend a short time with each person. The angels want to help you and support you. And remember as well, this is a public space, so if you prefer not to use your given name, that's fine. Just please let me know what you'd like me to call you. So the first caller is from 808. Hi there. How can the angels help you today? I'm calling from Hawaii. Welcome. Hi, hi. Wow. Wow. Tell me your name again. Trina. Trina. Okay. What is it that's causing you worry and anxiety that you need some guidance about? Well, I think my my spirituality has been evolving lately, which led me to you folks. Thank you so much for your peace and serenity. But of course, um, you know, maybe Christian views from the past and people that are Christian have me a little confused. So I just wanted to know if I'm on the right spiritual path. Is there a possible... Do I have gifts that I'm supposed to hone in on and how to do this? Oh, what a brilliant question. I am so grateful that you're here today. So let's take apart these questions one at a time. What you have brought forward is so extremely valuable. So please, Trina and everyone listening, understand that I am not interested in tearing apart or criticizing anyone's belief system. But I want you to understand that the spiritual journey is not, doesn't go hand in hand with a religious experience. So you may choose to follow Christian teachings and still be spiritual. However, You can choose to follow what you believe to be Christian teachings or any other religion and not be spiritual at all. So there's the difference. Spiritual means you are taking responsibility for your relationship with God. You are taking ownership over your life and what is required of you. You're not pointing fingers at, you know, if it wasn't for you, Sue, I would be just fine. That's not spiritual. <laughs> That's just blame. And that we have, there's no place for blame in the spiritual life. Spiritual life is all about stepping into the place of unconditional love where you accept, you begin with yourself and you accept, love and accept yourself first, allow yourself to fill up with that unconditional love, with praise, with real joy about who you are. And then from that place of fullness, which will just naturally overflow, because the more time that you spend 
aligned with the divine, the more you fill from that place of overflowing, you are able then to reach out and help guide others into their place of overflow. Now, this is very different from religion that has been perverted through the years and in some cases is teaching things like we're better than someone else or you're only good if you believe as we do or um, God has a reason to dislike you. So thank you. understand what well, I'm saying? Thank you. Absolutely yeah. confirming where I, I am in my spirituality. So I appreciate that. I'm so delighted, though. This is such a powerful question. We need to understand that people who are working within a religious framework do not see themselves as being judgmental or being unaccepting of you or your beliefs. However, if someone says to you, well, there's something wrong with you, Trina, because you don't say the prayer the way I say it, and I think that God doesn't love you because of that. Probably without their understanding, they have stepped into a place of judgment and fear, and they are hopefully wanting to guide you because they are afraid that something will happen to you, that you can somehow do or say something that will prevent God from loving you. But if you really develop a relationship with the divine, you will understand there is nowhere that you can go that you can escape God or their loving presence. You cannot do anything that makes you unacceptable. You can do things that don't feel good, but you will always be loved and accepted. Your actions may not be sanctioned, but you will be loved and accepted. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Now, you also asked, do you have gifts? 100% yes. yes. One, absolutely. And how do I know that? Every single person has come with a gift, at least one gift to share, something to bring to the world that will enhance the world. There are no exceptions. Some people choose not to unwrap that gift and not to explore it further uh, because and part of that, I think, is because they really don't step into their spirituality. And, and recognizing your gift means that you're devoting some time to the spiritual journey. So some people just never step into their gift. And other people find that that first gift leads to many others. So let's look at what a gift is, because it's not just um, can you talk to the energetic realm sometimes well first of all let, let me backtrack they're correcting me uh, everyone can uh, just like everyone brings a gift everyone brings a line of communication with the divine otherwise life would be impossible so there is always a line of communication and there is always a gift or a purpose, something that you want to share because that brings meaning to your life. And you must understand that the divine are the ultimate perfection. <laughs> they don't get it wrong. So there's no ego there. There's nothing like, oh, if I give Trina a lot of gifts, I'll she'll be better than I am. <laughs> Yeah. This is not, right. not an ego thing. It's a right. This is not, not part of the conversation. So everyone is given at least one gift and everyone is given a line of communication, but both of them have to be explored. You have to open up to them. They come, they're apparent when we are children, 
But as we grow further from our origin point and from the energetic realm, we close down so that we can rediscover all that we are. Because the whole point of the life journey is to experience all these different ways of being and grow from it. And if you always knew from, you know, day one to day one to year 100 that you were safe and nothing could ever happen to you, how much growth would you really be exposed to? There's something really incredibly phenomenal about having to understand from the darkest pit of hell that you've been safe all along (laughs) that is much more powerful than just sitting by the sidelines and saying, oh, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. It's getting down and dirty that really teaches us how to grow spiritually. So there's a reason that we forget that we have this connection. And there's a reason why it often seems like a struggle. We got it, you know, like the the, uh, chick pecking its way out of the egg and the butterfly having to fight its way out of the cocoon. The strengthening that comes from having to understand who you are without the divine and what you could be with them is brilliant. Now, the way to find your gifts or the way to discover, you know, what your path may be is just look at something that you do really well. And remember, gifts are not just limited to spiritual. So that computer nerd that I rely on (laughs) because that's not my gift is just as worthy as someone may consider me to be because I can speak with the angels. I just trained myself in that department. My car mechanic, who is also another high on my list of can't live without people, that's their gift. And I actually had, obviously because of what I do, I tend to always hear or listen for the angel connection in people. And I went to a car mechanic one time, and I just felt like playing around and asking him more about it. And I said, just how do you know? And he said, you know, it's just like the car speaks to me. I can hear, I can hear everything it's saying through the noises. Or when I'm driving it, I can feel it. I thought, oh, my gosh, the angels are speaking to him through this engine. This is truly a gift for him. When we look at it that way, we see how powerful we can be if we just give up all of the questioning and all of the I hope so. Oh, maybe. What if I don't have a gift? You've got a gift. It's what you do well. It's what you would be drawn to anyway. It's your that thing that you know intuitively better than anyone else on the planet. And you already That's know what it is. is. Do you want to share? Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'd say art. I've got huge angel resonance with that. Absolutely. And here's what you need to understand. For those who cannot do what you can do with art, I have a client actually who is an artist and is extremely good at seeing the energetic realm, which is something that I I don't have physical sight into the energetic realm. She actually sees what's going on. And I said to her, do you realize what you would be offering people if they could see what you see. You need to start painting what you see because that will help people understand that it's real and it will give them more of a commitment and, you know, because it it gets, um, people tell me, oh, it gets so lonely or I feel like giving up or I wonder if I'm talking to myself, you know, 
if you can see into the energetic realm or if you can translate the energetic realm in some way through your art, it's an incredible gift for those who are either beginning their journey or who have become weary for some reason. So it's a beautiful well, one. Oh, it's absolutely, it's, it's art, but it's also come to the fruition of nail art, specializing in nails and, and just giving empowerment and it's kind of healing. I feel like it may be healing through this art that I'm able to give to clients and a lot of women and men. Absolutely, because while you have them there, you've got a captive audience. So not only are you helping them feel more beautiful, which is wonderfully exhilarating for the self-confidence and really important, but you can also talk to them about the angels and why you're wanting, you know, what what it is about what you're doing and how you're relating to them that speaks to the... healing touching. Exactly. You know, this is the why this is why I am touching you in this way if you feel that you want to share that or just let them experience it. It's a beautiful gift. And I wish you were here with me. I didn't even know, but just speaking with you it just kind of came out a little more confirmed. Oh, I'm so grateful. You're so beautiful. Thank you so much for all that you do. Oh, thank you. It is it is the most beautiful place to serve in the world. Just as you, with your nail art, when you bring the angels into your life, when you allow, I say angels, but it's the energetic realm. The divine, of course, is over all, but the angels are like my right. friends. <laughs> they come with me yeah. everywhere. When you allow them to guide you and lead you, it is just, it does, it's not the end of the challenges. It's just a life of joy. I just, I just am so grateful for every minute of every day. Not because it's perfect, but because it's perfect for me to help me grow. So please share with your clients if you feel that you should. For those who you feel just won't get it, just be your beautiful healing presence. And I guarantee you, you will change your little corner of the world over there. And if that's what each one of us is committing to do, we just change our corner of the world from fear to love, wow, what a beautiful world we'll live in. So thank you so much. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you. You're so welcome. Hello. Okay, so now we're going to our next caller, and thank you all for your patience. I want to make sure that each one of you feel heard and honored. Our next caller is from 856. Hi, how are you? Hi there, how are you? Doing good, how about you? I'm great. What would you like me to call you today? Uh, Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. And what's on your mind? What do you need to see see your way clear of? How can the angels help you today? With finances, job coming in, or relationship that's committed, either one. All right, well, let's take, let's begin with one, and we'll look at the whole thing, because really everything is part of the same ball of wax. So your energy, which is comprised of your thoughts and your feelings, determines everything that you're going to receive. So how do you feel about getting a job right now? I need it really bad, like yesterday, to pay my bills and live my life and stuff like that. Okay. So are you feeling joyful and delighted and excited that a job is here for you now? Or are you feeling helpless, desperate, and worried? Uh, a little bit of everything. 
Good. Honest answer. I love that. Now I want you to pick the highest vibration possible and stay there. That means no matter what it looks like, and I don't care how dark it looks like, and I've been in the darkest of the dark, so I know what I'm talking about. (laughs) No matter how dark it looks, I want you to commit to yourself to find joy, for, to find reasons to be excited about where you are right now and to step into a place of certainty that everything you need is going to be provided for you when you need it. Now, this is going to take some work because desperation is a really, really powerful negative force. And if we're not careful... It will consume your life and eat you alive. And I would say I lived in desperation for a good 20 years. I understand the energy really well. And you are not going to think clearly or act intelligently from the place of desperation, nor are you going to be able to interact successfully with the energetic realm. So when you get those feelings of desperation, you have to immediately turn your thoughts away from that. So let's just do a little practice. So here comes the thought, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get a job. I'm never going to pay my bills. How am I going to eat? How am I going to, where am I going to live? What am I going to do? You got to take a deep breath. It's going to be a challenge in the beginning, but you're bigger than that challenge. You take a deep breath, a couple of deep breaths. Just allow yourself to relax. And you begin letting go of that fear. And you tell yourself, Rosemary, you are an amazing being. It's all up to you. What you attract is up to you. So what do you want to attract today? You got to be really serious with yourself. You can't just, oh, I hope so. Understand how powerful you are. Things don't get better when you play the game. I'm weak, small, stupid, blah, blah, blah. None of that is true. You got to play the game to win. And the way you're going to win is getting a little serious with yourself, Rosemary, you're a brilliant, beautiful, fabulous individual. You are able to do whatever it requires in order to get a job. Just get any job and feel good about that. If you've been out of work for a while, I would not suggest going for a $100,000 executive position. It's too far of a vibrational reach. Get anything. Get back into the routine of working. Get feeling better. Get caught up on your bills. Relax a little bit. And then look for another job that would pay you a little bit more or be a little closer reach in terms of the skill set that you have. But you've got to keep yourself away from it'll never happen and into the place where you just keep reminding yourself, I am fully capable of attracting a wonderful job. That great job is here for me now. I can feel that. It feels so good to get up and go to work. Wow, look at that. I'm Got that paycheck coming in. Oh, I feel so relieved to have this paycheck. Yeah, I can really feel that. And then make sure that you are also finding anything in your life that's working right now and focusing on that. Because sometimes it's even too hard to make the leap from I'm desperate for a job to I can feel that that job is here for me now. So you should go into that neutral place where you can say, I can be really grateful that I have food for this minute. 
stay present. That's really important. You can't get out into the future or go back into the past. Oh, I wish, I wish. Stay present. Stay right here in this moment. I'm so grateful that I have clothing or shoes or whatever it is that you can express sincere gratitude for in this moment or that you can acknowledge Look at this. I have so much. And then list whatever it is. I have so much water. I have so much whatever it may be that feels good to you. Um, We don't want you to get into that place where you are allowing yourself to begin engaging in the what if dialogue. It's got to be this is what I have. I can be grateful for all that I do have. And I'm excited about all that I am attracting to me with these positive, powerful thoughts. So do you understand what I'm saying there? Yes. Okay. And now you also mentioned a relationship. It is exactly the same kind of application. Uh, But in this particular case, and actually for both of them, let's really focus on Rosemary loving Rosemary. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of everything that I've been able to accomplish. I'm so proud that... Instead of feeling sorry for myself, I'm reaching out for help and I'm asking for direction about how I can attract to me the best job and a great relationship. This is the way that I want you to talk to yourself. Just let go of, oh, you're so stupid, you should have held on to that job or you should have known that that company wasn't doing well and you should have gotten out in front of this, that, 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 that. You are always perfect. You're not complete, but you're always perfect. So you just say, what have I learned from going through this circumstance? How have I strengthened? What is it that I need to know moving forward that will help me not be in this position anymore? You're really quite brilliant. You're just like all of us fell into the pit of hell for a moment, which is called desperation. But congratulations to you, because I landed there for more than 20 years. I think you're doing pretty darn good. Cool. You're reaching out beautifully. Just remember that. Look at all that I've done. And make sure that every day you take a step in the direction that will ensure that that job, you find that job that feels good to you. You are exceedingly worthy to stay in that place of of self-worth and self-love. And the relationship and the job, they're on their way to you. Make sure you keep the door open. Cool. Appreciate it. You're so welcome. Okay, next caller is from 831. Hi there. Hi. Tell me your name, please. um, My name is Christina. Hi, Christina. And hi, I'm um, calling from... California, and I'm really happy that I was led to the show today because I have a very old wound that is circling around from my childhood and young adult to present time. I'm, um, and it's all around fear. And just really quickly, uh, I grew up. And I wanted to leave, but I was a pregnant teen. And my little boy was like two, but in my family home, there was a lot of abuse. And I knew that I needed to not be around uh, that, 
or subject my child to that. And um, but the fear of not know, like the, the world would swallow me up. And how am I going to do course. this? I have no skills. Blah blah blah. To fast forward, um, I ended up, you know, running a daycare, and they left. They left me the house to rent, and so that problem was solved. But I never healed the wounds. Fast forward to today, you know, 30 years later, um, I'm in a situation where I have alimony and support, but my soon-to-be ex-husband does not want to pay that. So he's concocted a situation where he decided to have shoulder surgery, timed it, and is actually with his arrogance and ego, which I worry for him because he's going to get in trouble, but I have to not worry about that. He's making his own decisions. Lie about not being able to go back to work when really it's another job within the corporation and try to shave off six months to get me to drop out of school. So my thing is you know that you need to marinate, number one, on what you have, all the things that are going right for me now. And whenever I don't know the details of how something's going to work, that's the pattern of quitting. And I can't quit. And when I was sick, I didn't have to figure out how the healing was going to happen or who, what, what remedy I was going to find because I knew it was emotional, spiritual, and physical. I knew it, that it would happen, and it did. It's so I'm kind of confused as to why there must be still something that's not healed that maybe I'm not aware of because I will wake up and I'm frustrated right now that I'm in fear again. And I keep saying, okay, start again. Start thinking about all the things that are going right. Start listing everything that's going right. Listing everything that you're grateful for. And after probably about 20 minutes, I feel so much better. And I start to get optimistic and excited. And I feel good for a few days. And then, boom, I'm shocked that I'm in it again. And I said, no, I'm looking you in the eye. It's a very old pattern I've been in. And I'm getting out of this. Now, let's start over. Do you have any? um, I think the root of it is that I go to court Friday. And I don't know, my intention and prayer has been, please, God, let all the deceitful intentions and actions be exposed. And I heard a man's voice say, Yelp. And this was a few months back. And that would be a way I could prove that he's actually working and taking on um, disability at the same time. Um, but they pulled the Yelp reviews. And, they, and there are some that I have that say they when it's supposed to be one person. Anyway, long story short is, this is coming up for a reason because it's still unhealed. I want to soar. I feel like I'm, but I have my um, bungee jump on and the cords, and I'm at the tip of the cliff, and I'm getting ready to just jump into my new life. Um, but I get, I stop being in the receiving mode when I start to think about how I don't know about all the details, and I'm sure a lot of people can understand what I'm sharing about like if you don't know the details and or you're trying to figure a solution out I I tell myself don't try to figure it out put it surrender trust you know it's like you were saying trust you know God is very clever the universe the divinity the angels whoever the power greater than yourself they are very very clever at figuring out how it will unfold and how it will help you heal only to go on to another lesson and that's great because it's never done and it's never finished and it's we're eternal but i am seeing and being made aware of maybe this is a pattern that's been going on like i'm an automatic pilot and i really want to turn that automatic pilot button off um as i'm walking the unknown path and uh, Mm -hmm. the first in my family by the way Wow. So anything the angels have to say that could help, it's like I, it's like a, wa- a wash rag dipped in water. I wring it out, and it's like wringing out everything you know. You know this. You know, so whatever the angels can say through you today to me that would really help me just hold on to it, whether it's just keep doing what you're doing, just okay, as soon as you feel it, 
start going over what you have to be grateful for and all the things that are going right. And then and keep reaching for the better feeling because as you do, then you start to get into an alignment and you start to feel wonderful because you start to connect with source. And then that's when the impulses come. I had an impulse to get tape for underneath a carpet because the carpet was up, which led me to the divorce papers, which led me to the answers that I needed in something else that I was going through. So it's like, remember the impulses, even if they don't make sense, just go with it. But all right, you're, you're feeling the fear. Go meditate. Clear your mind right now. Just empty out everything. And that is brilliant, but often when we're feeling the fear, we're not able to empty out. So what I want to share with you is the angels, and it's really the energy of the Christ consciousness, excel at helping people who were exposed to abuse let go of that and transform it. So what you want to do is invite in, I call that energy Jesus, because that Jesus okay. has been a friend. It doesn't have to be yeah. that name. It's that energy. Invite the energy of Jesus into your heart, and together you need to explore the earliest incident when the very earliest time that you can remember being consciously aware of the abuse or just the first well, time that pops into your mind four when you were four okay so yeah. when you and by the way that, that's the first angelic encounter which course. is amazing it, Yes, and they don't. They would never leave you. If you're in an abusive situation, I guarantee you will also have a strong presence of angels because you wouldn't be able to get through it without them. So when you dive into this, and I have a class on this, which may be really helpful because it will go more in depth, but when you dive into that incident, when you're quiet and with Jesus and you dive into that place, you need to begin looking at the mm-hmm. shape of the of what you're perceiving. You know, what what is the shape or the smell or even the temperature and what does that mean to you? So let me give you an example. Let's say actually I'll give you an example that um a client shared with me. So we were looking at some past abuse for her. And she said it started, or her earliest memory is three. So we went into the space in the heart where that was being stored. And it's being stored to protect you so that when it comes at you again, you won't just be standing there. You'll try to do some defensive maneuver. It's not to trip you up. It is to try to keep you safe. But once you're out of the situation you need to let go of it or it does become a detriment to you. So we enter the heart. So how do you let go? Like what's that process? Would it be writing and then, um, you know, keeping it or burning it in in a releasing it into the ethers? um, Because my little girls did that last night. You can. I ask the angels to help. So in this particular case, As she went to this place, it became for her a smooth, cool-feeling metal door. And it popped into my mind to ask her, I said, gosh, is that a freezer? And she almost fell over because she said, oh, my gosh. I didn't remember one time when we were playing hide-and-go-seek as kids, I got locked into a freezer, and it was an unconscious fear that she had carried forward all this time. You bring the angels in then to release that, to let it go, to acknowledge it, to thank it for being there and keeping space and to try to keep you safe, but you let it know. And Archangel Michael is brilliant at getting rid of the negative vibration that you've been holding on to 
he make it clear that it is no longer necessary for you to have this negativity. You're not you don't need to be protected from that anymore. Once you feel as though you've let that go, you've been able to release it, then you bring in the Holy Spirit with unconditional love to hold the space. And you allow yourself to see you see yourself as you are now, which is a beautiful bright light. Look what a look at all that you've achieved. It's you a lot. Have to, yeah, you don't have I have to, a year of college under my belt. You don't have to reach very far. You know, with some people I gotta really rah rah myself you know, be their best cheerleader and dig things up from everywhere to say, look what you've achieved. But you've managed to move out of an abusive situation to having your own business. This is hugely successful. And it's no surprise that you have a marriage that didn't work out because until the trauma is cleared, you're going to be subconsciously attracting from that point of trauma. That's why it's so important yeah. to clear it. And then I didn't work for 16 years, so I felt like everything that, was un, that wasn't that was healed on the inside was reflected through him to me as an yeah. opportunity for me to heal that. And what's Absolutely. amazing is those, um, those, those heals are, uh, the wounds are, are healing. They're healed. I did two years of clinical psychology um, uh, uh, with a therapist because I have PTSD and I know I won't always have it. I'm working on dissipating it. It's like being on level one when you are playing a video game and 23, the third level is when you finish. And number one, just knowing, having identified as what this fear was that I never told anyone about until it became like a snowball going down a hill, and it, I, ha, I didn't know what it was, and it caused me to go into AFib, and if I didn't get that under control, I wouldn't be around. So I, I was like, okay, and then two years of not even asking to treat it, um, but just to talk and to be heard and co- deal with those issues. And it's been like layers upon layers upon layers of um, – information but also enough to get that root pulled out of denial because I always was the strong one you know and that's why and let me interrupt you for just a second it's very very important that you look at what really was you don't try to hide oh no it didn't happen it did right yeah but it's over and you can let it go pretending it's not there, just allows it to bury its way in another way. So you look at it as it is, and then you ask Archangel Michael to help you releasing it, in releasing it. Now, I want to say like one more thing. like um, meditation? When you go deeply into the heart space with the energy of the Christ consciousness. That, yes, so I always see, do it to make sure it's in the light. Okay. I'm just now, not consistent. That's okay. That's just every day. Be a little bit, get a little closer. Start with five okay. minutes daily. Instead of try to do 30, do five, do one. Do what you can. Okay. And then increase so that it's it. daily. Well, what yeah. I've been doing on my drive to school is saying, thank you, God, for casting your eyes upon me for inspiring me, for mentoring me, for knowing the intentions of myself and for those around me, for helping me, for adoring me, for loving me. And then I just sort of loop it around and then I'm in silence and suddenly I have answers come up to questions and, you know, with issues I'm trying to resolve and I start... I feeling these wonderful feelings of um, peace and contentment and happiness and joy for being, I was saying I, one of the lessons I really feel like I need to be learning and that I'm actually in the process of learning is loving the contrast and knowing that there is value in it for me, Um, that there is value in this because I, I, people grow from difficult situations. Like I use that analogy of the butterfly you know, if somebody helped to open up the cocoon, 
those newly formed wings and the blood vessels that never had blood pushed through it, it wouldn't have the strength to carry itself and it would drop and it would die. And the purpose of the struggle is to push the blood through the vessels and to give the wings the strength. So I have one and only one tattoo on my body that's the size of a dime, literally. It's super tiny on my ankle, none other, but it is of a butterfly for that very purpose. I had lost 100 pounds, and it was um, a lot of work. And now as I get into alignment and start listening to my body and getting the sleep and the exercise and my mind, mind, body, soul, the, you know, doing the chakras, the meditations, I start to feel um, that naturally my body's just going back to its natural weight. It's not really much of a struggle because I'm, yeah. So is, is there any truth to do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do? If you just do the little, um, do that a little bit when you wake up, you know, for the chakras, just to see them clearing out and, um, you know, seeing those colors, um, you know, because I'll see, oh, it's foggy today. Let's go ahead and work on the root a little bit here. Or I go to sleep with some vibrational music that's just about the root chakra. So you just sleep and it just helps the subconscious as well as, you know, I'm sort of doing a variety of things naturally. I just feel a deeper sense uh, that I'm beginning to connect and I'm, Waking up, and I saw a beautiful blue butterfly, and it was Aww. descending down. There were dark uh, blue on the rims, and I heard these words, as gentle as the wings of a butterfly, each tear is a story. And I got up, and I wrote it down because I knew I need to get it out. I'm hurting all of these memories. I just need to get it out. So um, it's like I wake up, and I'm remembering that, you know, tonight I was in the house I used to live in and I was going through the rooms with a guide and they were telling me, you are the love. No. You are the love. Yes, so I are. like I take it with me. Yeah, because I've been feeling so alone. You know, it's hard being you're not a- 20 years and, you know, I person's know, honey, gone. But you're not alone. And we have got so many more callers. I'm just got to keep pushing on but I want to let you know that you are always safe and loved and if you're really needing to eliminate the fear I have an incredible class called defeat the demon of fear that will it it is already pre-recorded so you can have access to it immediately it will help you find and eliminate the places in your heart that are still filled with trauma. So thank you so much, Christine, Christina. And we are going to our next caller. And this time it is from 805. Oh, thank you. Hi, this is Donna. How are you? Hi, Donna. How are you, honey? Good, thank you. Well, not really. I hurt my back, so I have to go physical therapy, the lower back. Oh, so painful. (laughs) Oh, gosh. (laughs) But think how strong you're going to be in a few weeks. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Thank goodness. Kind of puts a dampener on everything. Um, Well, let me tell you, about two months ago, no, maybe three months ago, I was saying in my, I do meditation, you know, I do meditation for like a half an hour every day and I was asking God to bring in a partner for me a male partner maybe for marriage and then also more abundance and then I was sitting in the silence in my meditation and all of a sudden I heard something it, I don't know where it came from it wasn't loud or anything it came in very lovingly that said it's coming soon and then it filled my heart up and I felt gentleness and love and everything so I mean that's just that's the higher consciousness telling me that it's coming in soon, right? That it's going to happen. Absolutely. Now, let's this 
again, you guys are so brilliant today. It's so important that we look at all of these things. So here's Donna, and she has gotten complete confirmation that what she has asked for and is desiring is on its way to her. Now, you would think that that means, okay, it's, she's good. It's done. Yes, but we have free will. So we, she's done all this wonderful work up till this point, and yet we all have the ability to undo it if we start getting into the place of, oh, it's been two weeks. Oh, it's been a month. Oh, my gosh. When is it coming? Is it coming? I don't know if it's coming. Oh, my God. Did I hear it? Didn't I? We've got to learn how to relax. We've got to step into that faith, place of faith, where we say, when I was heard that information or when I received that information, it felt so Mm -hmm. lovely. It felt so divinely aligned that I know that I can fully trust that information. And when you said it to me, I received that same I call it like a heart blossoming where the, where the energy just spreads outward from the heart. So we know that the divine is all over this, but if you start hopping into that place of uncertainty or fear, then you're going to push it away. And speaking, Christina, this one, this is also for you as well. When we are wanting to, attract a mate or improve relationships with anyone. The relationship angels are magnificent in helping us. Not necessarily, it's not always that they help you improve the relationship. Sometimes you need to, the relationship is over. You've learned what you can learn and, or you're going in different directions and you need to lovingly let it go. When you call on the relationship angels, which is as simple as saying, relationship angels, please allow me to see the highest good for all concerned in this relationship, then you will either draw people closer to you because you'll be able to see loving characteristics within that person that you may have been overlooking, or you may be seeing some of your own behavior that can be off-putting because you're afraid or getting in that state of anxiety of I hope so or you may see the person as they are choosing to be at this moment and you will realize that is not a person that you want in your life right now you're not going the same direction you don't have the same goals or it's just not a good idea for you to be involved with them It doesn't make the person bad. It's just showing you where they are and where you are. And, of course, always those of us on a spiritual journey want to choose the highest vibration possible. So, Donna, you beautifully chose a vibration of pure, unconditional love when you asked to connect with someone, a romantic partner. And that is all that you want to stay attached to. But if you ever feel yourself wavering or wobbling, please call on the relationship angels to help you even stronger in your ability to attract this person to you. Because you absolutely deserve to, and everyone, not just Donna, Everyone deserves the desires of, of their heart, your heart. No, God never says no. We get in the way. We start hopping up and down and saying things like, I don't know why it's not coming, or maybe I'm not worthy, or I haven't, uh, you know, I, I said a bad thing or did a bad thing, and God can't love me, so I shouldn't have this. That's the way it's prevented. It is not God punishing you, withholding from you, or testing you. We get in our own way. 
God is just love. They will only send you loving answers. If it's balled up, it's because we're having a problem. So that's when you say, angels, I need help. I feel like, you know, I'm wobbling or I don't feel worthy or I'm confused. Any of those things. Reach out for help. Just do what you did. Get into that beautiful state of meditation. Please help me, angels. Guide me through this. Let me see what's really true. Let me see what I need to do. How can I participate in this? What is it that I need to do? How can I strengthen my faith? They will walk with you every step of the way as long as you allow them to. How beautiful. So I can't wait to hear what this great guy looks like and uh, yeah. what your relationship is all about. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'll let you know for sure. Okay. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Okay, we got another caller from 347. Hi. Hi there. What would you Hi. like me to call you today? Call me Sunshine. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yes, how are you? Happy New Year. Thank you, and to you as well. What would you like help with? What do you need okay. the angels to Oh, you? I would like help. Okay, I would like help with, um, I'm trying to figure, okay, I met someone yesterday, right? I went I went out. I don't go out that much, but I went out and I met a guy and he said he calls me over to him. I thought it was somebody I knew cuz he looked like somebody else, but it wasn't. But anyway, I gave him a hug and I, and he was like, "You know, I wanted you to know you're so beautiful." And we're talking and everything. I'm like, "Oh, look, I I meet a guy." And then I asked him, "Wait a minute. Do you have a girlfriend?" He goes, "Yes." And I go, and I go, "Okay. Well, we can't talk in that kind of way." <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So I want to know, um, why am I attracting? Why, like, is it, why am I attracting unavailable men? Like, do I have a fear of being in a relationship, or my needs? Like, do I have a fear of something, or how? And how can I get rid of it? If so. Okay. When I look at you, mm-hmm. you are wearing a big sign that says, "I'm not worthy." Oh, okay. You are a brilliant, beautiful being that doesn't love you. I want you to begin right now and say, I'm going to, I'm ready to let go of that unattractive and untruthful belief. I'm just going to let it go. Let's call in Archangel Michael. Just let him separate you from that belief right now now and now look to the angels and oftentimes when I'm doing this work I will suggest that we physically move ourselves so let's have Archangel Michael come in from the right and Mm -hmm. take away that unworthiness that sense of shame about something that happened a very long time ago that hey you know what if we all were living our lives by what happened yesterday, none of us would get anywhere. So just let go of whatever it was. It's not important, and it has absolutely no benefit except that you became stronger from it. So Archangel Michael, just say, here you go. Here is all of the garbage that I've been holding on to and not wanting to let go of. Just let him take it back to the divine. They can transform any garbage we create into unconditional love and send it back to us purified. And now look to the left and just say, angels, help me. Bring to me that feeling that I have had such difficulty hanging on to. Help me recognize the brilliance that is me. I am sunshine. I am a bright light in the room. I live to help make others feel better. 
but I've forgotten to help myself feel better. It's time for me. I'm ready now to learn how to build myself up to feel really good about me. Now, if you're knowing or recognizing that this is an ongoing um, thing for you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It, It was prior. It was, yes. Okay. Well, I have a class about uh, how to stop self-sabotage that Mm -hmm. will help you with that too. If you want to go deeper, if you feel like you're having trouble calling on the angels by yourself and you need some support, that Mm -hmm. class can really unlock a lot of doors for you. All of the classes are channeled. So you get angelic Mm -hmm. support throughout the class. It's not me just making up stuff. It is the angels supporting us with a technique that will help you really put this to rest. But just this little bit should help you step into the sunshine that is you and out of that dark room where you've locked yourself in. You are a beautiful, brilliant light. You're just not acknowledging it. You're still punishing yourself for yesterday. So just let go. Let go. Call upon the angels for support. I need your help, angels, to move out of this darkness into the light. And then you'll need help to stay in the light. So you make sure that you practice being in alignment every day by choosing those better feeling thoughts, choosing to focus on what is going well, what you do like, what you do have, what thing that brings you joy. You can't, it's just, it's never going to be a one and done. It's always going to be an ongoing process if you are going to be successful at changing your pattern from self-sabotage to self-love. Okay. All right, honey. Thank you. Thank you. For being thank our you sunshine so today. Oh, thank you so much for being a healer for me. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, our last caller. We're over time, but we've got, let's take five more minutes. And it's a call from 917. Hello. Hi there. How can I help you? Yeah, I'm just checking to see if there are any messages for me, or should I ask a question? Why don't you ask a question? It's better if if you are more specific, because, of course, the message they're going to tell you is be more self-loving. It's almost always (laughs) coming from us. That's but true. if you have something okay. specific, then they can give you, you know, more accurate guidance. Okay. So I'm trying to see how should I – I go, I'm intuitive myself, okay? And um, just wanted to see what you pick up. Um, I have a uh, case that I'm working on. Um, I have a rock full – termination case, more likely it could be considered as a racial case as well. And I'm going to uh, start looking for a lawyer now. Just wanted to see what you pick up on that. Okay. Forgot to ask you what your name is, number one. Oh, it's Terry. Terry. Okay. I want you to call on the angels for this. Because we, you need to stay out of ego. Ego can say, Terry, you were so badly wronged. You need to really make sure that, that you uh, get everything that's coming to you. That may be true. But when we come from a place of anger or uh, self-righteous sort of bravado, We're coming from a low low vibrational register, and that means that you're going to attract into your life more situations like that. So we don't want you attracting any more of that. So instead, 
I want you to say, okay, I recognize that this situation has happened. It certainly doesn't feel nice. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel good to have been discriminated been discriminated against in any way, shape, or form. So first, the first thing is, what have I learned from this? Where is the benefit? Always look for the benefit because it immediately changes our vibrational resonance. We start seeing, oh, my gosh, if this hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here, and then I wouldn't have that, and I wouldn't have you know. mm-hmm. There's so much good that comes from it. So then from that place of, I am so grateful that this circumstance has come to me. Now, angels, the divine, please show me how I would best be served and how I can best serve by moving this forward or if I should move this forward. So You know, when we're in anger, we go full steam ahead from our hurt. When we are in a place of gratitude, we're able to stop for a minute Mm -hmm. and just ask, would I be best served by moving this forward? And, of course, you know the angels will only do that which is for your highest good and for the highest good of all concerned. So, They would never let you bring this case forward if it means it's going to cause you personal injury or harm. If it's not to your benefit, for whatever reason, you know, if this is going to cause you tremendous stress or devalue you in some way, they will advise you not to go forward, just to recognize what you've learned, to be grateful, to Stay in that place of benefit and gratitude because let me tell you, money is easy to manifest. They're like, you know, they're like the universal bank. So don't worry that you've lost a source of income. It is easy to replace everything. What's difficult is snapping out of that attitude of, oh, look what they've done to me. This is so wrong. It didn't happen to you by chance. It happened to you for a reason. And your job really should be looking to see what have I learned? What's the benefit in this for me? You're extremely insightful. So have that conversation with them. Angels, please show me what it is that I needed to learn and how you want me to move forward in this, with this case. If I should move forward with an attorney, please bring to me the attorney that will be best suited to help me have a favorable outcome, if that is for my highest good. However, angels, if I just need to walk away and recognize, and take this lesson, now I'll know that, uh, you know, watch out for these red flags. If it would be better, if I would be better served by walking away, then please make that clear to me. Now, exactly, what, yes. Mm-hmm. What we need to remember is once we ask them, we can't go back and say, and I'll give you an example of something that just happened to me. Angels, um, why aren't you answering? Or, gosh, angels, uh, remember... I need to have an answer. It is instead, angels, I know that you have answered, but for whatever reason, I haven't heard or perhaps it hasn't, it's not yet time for me to know the answer. Please make sure that I understand this answer. Please consider, continue to send me information until you see that I have really uh, understood the answer. And I'll share an example before we have to go of something that happened for me. I had to make a decision. I was working with someone and I just was not going. This was someone I had hired to do work for me. And it was not going the way that I wanted it to go. I kept getting, instead of work produced, I kept getting evasive answers. And instead of a timeline, I would get, oh, 
you know, kind of, you need, you should have done this, or I can't move forward until you do this. And so I kept feeling like, hey, I don't know <laughs> here, angels. I'm having, a, I kind of feel like this is not going in a great direction. I'm not feeling like I want to continue paying for this service without mm-hmm. feeling that I've re- received anything. Exactly. So said, okay. So, angels, please let me know what I should do. I don't want to judge someone unfairly, but I'm really feeling uncomfortable, and I think I'm seeing red flags. Please let me know what I need to do. Well, it was almost a week that I... <laughs> I had to wait, and it, well, I was tempted to say, gosh, did you guys hear me? <laughs> I'm really getting <laughs> But they kept just reminding me that they always hear us, and so I was able to, to say to them instead, okay, angels, I completely trust you. Mother, Father, God, I completely trust you. I understand that you have answered. Or if you have not answered, it's because it's not the right time. But if you have answered, I sure didn't hear you. Please show me again. <laughs> and when they showed me, I was like, oh, okay, end of employment. Thank you very much. We will not be continuing. That's the end of that. It's just you got to keep getting yourself out of the way. Mm-hmm. And just in the place of trust, they will answer. You are their first priority. They will answer. And you just, the only thing that I feel from you is that sometimes you may be playing that. I wonder if they're going to answer. I wonder if I'm worthy of receiving an answer or gosh, uh, I hope so. You know better. Okay. You're Mm -hmm. way too advanced for that. (laughs) It's a trap we all fall into. And from Uh one empath to another, (laughs) I'm just telling you. (laughs) Okay, I I understand completely. (laughs) Excellent. You are loved. You are powerful. And they are guiding you every step of the way. And now we are way over time. So thank you so much. That was so fun. Thank you. And such a perfect way to uh, end the show because we got to hear so many different worries. And so I just want to take a minute before we do end and thank each and every one of you who shared because we learn from each other. No one has all the answers. But if you had an experience that isn't going the way you feel it should, and you share that with the rest of us, we all learn, and then we don't have to go through that experience because we'll remember, hey, I could have done it the easy way. So please ask your angels for help. Stay open to the love that's pouring forth from you every minute of every day from the divine, and know that you are worthy. Now, as always, I'm sending you all my love, and please remember that if you want to go deeper, I have so many classes on my website. It's Marsha Martin, the heart healer.com, Marsha spelled M-A-R-C-I-A, or if you feel you need ongoing support, my Patreon community, which is also on my website, the Healing Hearts community is free to join for the month of January, and it is packed full of tips and techniques that the angels have given me either for a private client, and that client has said, absolutely, I can share it once they have learned it and, and gotten benefit from it, or they have, ch- they have given it directly to me, and it was so helpful to me that I wanted to share it with all of you. We are one big, beautiful, loving community, and I want you to have the greatest opportunity for success available. So please take advantage of all of the angelic support and help. 
It's Marsha Martin, thehearthealer.com. Marsha, M-A-R-C-I-A. And again, love, love, love to each and every one of you. You've been listening to another fabulous program on Angel Heart Radio. Our goal is to remind you of how much you matter in the world and to let you know that we appreciate who you are in the world. You can check out who's on, when we're on, and who our guests are at angelheartradio.com. Everything is there. It's all just one click away. Angel Heart Radio programs are powerful tools to help you in your life and your life experience. They are not intended, nor should they, be used to replace your medical or legal advice. The views expressed by hosts, co-hosts, callers, guests and associates should not be construed as advice from Angel Heart Radio.